Hello. So today it's a combo walk through parts of Versailles and parts of uh, Colonia Diaz Ordaz. What actually is happening is we just finished our broadcast for Thursday and I am pre-recording for Saturday and I am out running errands. The first thing I have to do today was to print Buenas tardes the PDF tickets for the symphony on Sunday and then I need to go get cash at my ATM on Medina Asensio and then I am meeting a friend for catch up lunch at Tsunami the sushi place on Fluvia. Is this a Paco walking tour? This is a Paco walking tour. Do we know each other? Profe Harper. Oh my god! I didn't recognize you. How are you? Bit of you look flawless. <laughs> How are you? Good in yourself? Great. So I what are you standing there and I'm like, hey, Paco. What is keeping you busy, puppy? Uh, teaching English uh -huh. and Spanish and other projects. Uh huh. So, yeah. Life is good? Life is good. Excellent. It's not terrible. Not terrible. <laughs> so. As long as we're walking together. Well, first of all, what are you doing in my neighborhood? Do you live around here? I was at Dairy Queen. At Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen uh, by by Carl's Jr. Uh-huh. Uh, it was a friend's birthday, so I treated him to a blizzard. That sounds wonderful. Yes. On a hot day like this, it was perfect. So what kind of words of wisdom do you have for English-speaking locals, as long as you're standing here <laughs> and walking with me. Well, learn to become Spanish-speaking locals. Learn to become Spanish-speaking locals. Yes. You know, sometimes I realize, and I appreciate that this can be challenging for some people. So I always say, the next best thing is befriend a Mexican national. But not like, not like we were like part of a checklist kind of thing, but mm -hmm. really, really have Mexican friends. People that you would invite for Thanksgiving dinner kind true, of thing. True, true. I mean, do you have close Mexican friends? Well, I think I'm in a unique situation because I was married. My, yeah. late, my late husband was from Topeak. Ah. So when I moved to Mexico, I lived in Topeak for the first seven years. Plus you speak Spanish, I've heard well, you. Well, that's how I learned Spanish, was because I lived in Topeak, where nobody speaks English. <laughs> Do you think English-speaking locals should marry well, Mexicans? Well, I don't want to give that advice. For me, it worked out pretty good. <laughs> but um, it, it wasn't the being married to a Mexican part. Uh -huh. It was living in a culture where there weren't a lot of English speakers. Uh -huh. The only English speakers were people I worked with. So, I got a crash course. Uh -huh. So, um, for me, that was good. Because I was forced to speak Spanish, to think in Spanish, to work, you know, where I worked. 
most of my colleagues didn't speak English, so I had to learn to speak Spanish for that, Oops. right? <laughs> Buenas tardes. Yeah. So, so, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but your agony will only last one more block. Okay, great. Um, but as long as we're here, can you think of an, an adventure you have had to, in Mexico where you thought to yourself, thank God I understand the language? Well, yes. So, for my job, when I lived in Tepic, I had to travel around Mexico. Mm -hmm. So... Just the traveling aspect of it, because there were times that I would have to travel, for example, to Monterrey, and then take a bus for eight hours to get to Ciudad Acuña, mm -hmm. for example. And, you know, uh, tra in travel, yes, in hospitality, a lot of people speak English, but not everybody does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanted to take a bus to Ciudad Acuña, uh -huh. not to Tamaulipas. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to end up in the wrong place. Yeah, I can imagine. So, um, for that reason, it was very helpful and I you know sometimes people would be very cool with me at first because they saw a gringo walk in mm -hmm. and then as soon as I started speaking Spanish uh, they would warm up to me you know all of a sudden they were nice and and not only speak Spanish but um, the humblest attempt always goes a long way doesn't it but but it's not just the language it's the culture behind the language, you know. Uh -huh. Here you say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Yes, I do. That's not normal in the United States. People think you're weird if you do that. So that just true. to do that brings a lot of respect. Um, you know, when somebody walks by and you say, if they're eating, you say, provecho. You know, something simple like you see someone near us, provecho. Which is normal, but for us, it's weird, you know, because it's like, why are they telling me bon appetit or, you know, something like that, so. You still make me blush. <laughs> it's great to see you, great puppy. Great to see you, too. Mm. Where are you headed? Ah, uh, to the stadium. You mean you're walking this way? I am. You have to endure me for another two blocks? Oh, I don't have to. It's a well, pleasure. Well, let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to the bank to get some money. Oh, okay. Um... And I could take any street, but I figured I would take the viewers down Francia because I haven't walked this street in a long time. You know, I haven't either. A couple weeks I walked by and I realized how nice the sidewalks are now because they're double the size of the sidewalk. A lot more space. You're not bumping into people as much. It is nice. Let's cross over to the other side. No te asustes, taquero. Hoy no vas a salir en la portada. No, hoy no. <laughs> we once featured that taco place as part of our oh, okay. of our taco tours, and I took a photograph of the of the taquero. He was all smiles. <laughs> and uh, yes, but you know we published. Oh, look at this. It's the it's the the furniture people that yeah. you never know where they're gonna park. And you never know where they're going to be. And if you try to get Buenas tardes, a specific schedule for them, you can never find them. Right, exactly. Anyhow, I featured the photograph of the taquero. And he published it on Facebook and he got a lot of carrilla <laughs> from his friends. Oh, gosh. Which is fine by me. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so hot. Ah, uh, but you know... We live in paradise. Yes, it's good for the poor. They <laughs> well, say our skin won't get dry. <laughs> yes, and the laundry industry thrives. Uh -huh. I mean, I find myself washing clothes so much it's not even funny. Exactly. Look at how nice the sidewalk has worked here. I know. Before for you restaurants had to walk like the these. People. Yes. Hey, like I don't even know if this is legal or not, but I'm happy for them. Oh, hey, what's up? Good. 
I'm so popular, Paco. I know, it comes with the territory. Okay, this is the definitive hug. Okay. Papi. Yeah, so good to see you. Likewise. See you in a year or so. <laughs> that seems to be off and I see you. It happens. Yes. But it's a pleasure to see you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Well, that was wonderful and unexpected. Handsome Profe Harbert, who I met originally at Hotel Mercurio, at one of Paul's Sunday parties. And I thought to myself, oh my God, what a handsome man. And I always get giddy when I meet him because he's handsome and interested. Interesting, rather. Anyhow, here we go. Back to our original plan of walking to the ATM to get cash. Cash for paying the rent, cash for spending in Guadalajara. Now I know that I've mentioned this before, but I am approaching the bus terminal that takes you to Talpa in Mascota. It's right over here. They have their hola. Their schedule posted. Oh, and I see we have caca water to overcome. Hold on just a second. We come this way. Ugh. To avoid the caca water. Anyhow, that's that's the bus terminal for Talpa and Mascota. And there's Los Cuentos Tap Room. We've talked about this wonderful tiny little place where you can sample Los Cuentos um, microbrew and they have wonderful snacks, bite-sized edibles inspired by um, cuisine from Oaxaca. Especially this time of year when it's so hot with a cold beer. Yummy! And we are approaching the intersection with Nisa Street. And Nisa Street is the street that we will take to get all the way to Tsunami. Last time we walked it, it was full of caca water. I think we may have walked it again when it was dry, but I don't remember. But I am intrigued also as to what happened to the proposed... Oh, and I think I have my answer. See, if you notice this, here. This, as far as I understand it, was a planter. If you recall, there were all these planters that were installed so that this street could have a bicycle path connecting to the street on um, Influvial, which is now open for Sunday recreational purposes for walkers and cyclists and joggers. But sometimes the city fails to explain their intentions or see them through. Nisa Street was remodeled before the end of the last administration and somehow the new administration could not convey to the public how important it would have been to have yet another bicycle path in our city. But what do I know? Anyhow, I am approaching my ATM, so I'm going to take a little break from recording so that I can get some moolah and I will be back in a second. Okay, cash mission accomplished. And now as I said before, I'm going to walk down Nisa Street all the way to Fluvial to enjoy sushi for lunch. And as we walk down Nisa Street, we remember that this is not Versailles, although a lot of people think about this 
neighborhood as Versailles. This is Polonia Diaz Ordaz, which is a small neighborhood located next to Versailles between Medina Asensio and, and Versailles. <laughs> Anyhow, now that I think of it, I know that we have walked part of this at least all the way up to Vienna. But we're going to keep going this time. I remember the first time we walked this. It was two summers ago and there was improvement going on all over. And there were all kinds of problems with developments being built in the neighborhood that were tapping into the water deposits under their foundations. So all this water was flowing everywhere. And here's an interesting, uh, an interesting view because if we look this way, this is Lisboa Street. That street has not been improved and this block has not been improved either. So little by little, the whole city is evolving as far as the pavement of the streets are concerned. But I am seeing on this block, just as in the previous block, that the planters that would have marked the bicycle path have been removed. Veronica mentioned this on one of the broadcasts a while back. And again, I think it's sad that people don't appreciate the benefit of riding a bicycle or having access to riding a bicycle safely in the city. We are one block away from Vienna Street, which is where we started our walk this morning. And there are still restaurants on this street that I have yet to visit. They're on my list. One of them is Mr. Vegan across the street, which we took a peek into one day and realized that it was built in a former barber shop. So the inside layout was rather curious. And here is Charlie's Walk. Now, Charlie's Walk, I'm gonna go in because I've become a customer. Buenas tardes. This is Charlie's Walk. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. But as you can see, you can order all kinds of things here like Pad Thai and, and something called Meat Lover, um, one that is called El Mar that features seafood, teriyaki chicken, or you can build your own walk as you wish. This is a place that is always busy and it's good that it is so close to my house because although there's always delivery people outside, I like to pick up my own food whenever I am ordering something. Hasta pronto. See, there goes another happy Uber Eats order. Hasta pronto. And now, we are at Vienna Street, which is the other big throughway in the neighborhood. Uh, Plaza Caracol is that way. My home is that way. And we are simply crossing the street. Now there are some changes as far as restaurants are concerned on this street. I remember that when this street was being fixed, one of the restaurants that couldn't make it through the summer 
was Pozolitlan, and Pozolitlan used to be right here. Now this place is called Fluffy's, and we're gonna take a quick look. Hola, buenas tardes. So this is now Fluffy's, hola, buen provecho. As you can see, they specialize in breakfast kind things, or they call them Fluffy's. Their original Fluffy, and all kinds of different fluffy desserts. This looks like sugar paradise, if you ask me. We'll have to come and check it out someday. Good morning, sir. Bueno. Hola. Tarde. Yeah, yeah I see. And of course, next to Fluffy's is Au Croissant. And we love Au Croissant. This is a, a French bakery that's been here for a while. And just look at all this wonderful stuff. Again, this is dangerously close to my house. Buenas tardes. Hola, buenas tardes. This is Au Croissant. And it is conveniently located. So if you need to have a sugar fix, a French sugar fix, that's for sure. This is where you do it. And continuing down Nisa Street. We're getting closer and closer to Fluvial. I'm getting closer and closer to lunch. And I'm excited. Let me check. Oh, perfect timing. Across the street, Bodeguita Versalles, I remember when they opened. Let's see if we can go in there and take a quick look. It says open, but the doors are closed. I suspect the air conditioning is on. So we are here and we might as well see what's new and exciting. Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Podemos echar un vistazo? So here we are. This is how Bodeguita Versalles is looking these days. They opened. ¿Cuándo abrieron? El año pasado o antepasado? They opened in October. In October, two years ago, and it continues to be a lovely, tiny store curated with wonderful handicraft things. But now I see that están ofreciendo comida. No, it's a taste room. Uh, wow. So this side of Bodeguita Versalles is now a taste room where you can get beer and wine. So it's not quite a restaurant, but it's a nice place to sit down, maybe draw something on the wall and enjoy the air conditioning. <laughs> It's hot out there, isn't it? But things have been good for you guys? Yeah, yeah, we've been okay. Uh, it's been slow, but steady. So. Excellent. Cheers. Good to see you. you Hasta pronto. Bye bye, doggy. So this is Bodeguita Versalles. Again, a nice little gift shop located in the middle of the neighborhood. But as I mentioned, the oddity of it all is that it's called Bodeguita Versalles, and yet it's located on Díaz Ordaz Street. I mean, Díaz Ordaz, Colonia. But who's watching? Buenas tardes. So we continue on our path, getting closer and closer to Sushi Tsunami. Again, Sushi Tsunami has been one of the most successful tsunami places in town. 
they were here before many other places opened. And now there's more of a competition, but it's still a great option. And it's air conditioned. Now let me cross the street because there's another eatery here that we may or may not have talked about. And this looks like a small comida corrida place. ¿Puedo pasar? Nada más a ver. So here we are. Buen provecho. This is a small comida corrida place right here in the neighborhood. And um, they're busy. They're busy, which is a good thing. There's some people waiting outside for food and there's some people eating inside. ¿Cómo se llama su restaurante? Dulce Amargo. Dulce Amargo. Muchas gracias. So the place is called Dulce y Amargo, which means sweet and bitter. So many eateries and fun spots are cropping up all over the neighborhood. It's difficult to keep up with all of them. But it's always nice to mention them so that you can realize that if you live in this neighborhood, there are just oodles and oodles of options in terms of places to eat, places to shop, and even places to live. There's a for rent sign up there. We don't know how much they want for that beautiful apartment, but, and there's another one over there for rent. A lot of times people are looking for places in this neighborhood and the easiest way to find something is usually by walking around and asking people that own businesses and shops. For the rest of us, if you already have a good place in Versailles, you want to be as nice as you can to your landlord to make sure that your landlord doesn't raise the rent. And I can see my destination, Sushi Tsunami is right ahead. Over here is this small little park. Behind it, there is a Farmacia Guadalajara. And we are one block away from Avenida Fluvial. And as we've been reporting lately, the other side after this coming, this intersection that's coming up, the main avenue that goes that way becomes Grandes Lagos. And it is Grandes Lagos that is being closed down on Sundays for people to enjoy. I see my lunch date is walking to meet me. So this is probably a good time to wrap things up. Again, thank you for spending time with me today. Oh, and there's a new store here. This is called the Upholsterer's Source. So if you're upholstering furniture, this is a place to do it. And, whoo! I'm ready for some air conditioning fun. So, here's Sushi Tsunami. Here I am. Thank you for joining me, and I'll talk to you soon.